So as soon as I saw the poll, which showed Nina Turner uh, having a 35-point lead over her opponent, right then and there, it became evident to me that the Democratic Party establishment was going to get very active in this race, and they were going to try to do whatever they possibly could to try to stop Nina Turner. So they brought out the big guns, and by big guns, I mean Hillary Clinton. And she came out to endorse Nina Turner's opponent. Now, this backfired because this ended up being one of Nina Turner's biggest fundraising days ever. And the same was true for Jamal Bowman as well. So this predictably backfired. And it's like Democratic Party operatives haven't been paying attention and they don't know that Hillary Clinton fell out of favor with the Democratic Party base. Regardless, though, the effort to try to stop Nina Turner is now serious. So now it's time to sound the alarm and now it's time for everyone who's just been sitting on the sidelines to actually get involved and sign up to phone bank for Nina Turner, canvas for Nina Turner, and if you can, spare a buck or two to try to make sure that this victory is hours because this isn't going to be a foregone conclusion yes she does have a lead but a lot can change when you are working against this establishment machine that will do any and everything that basically has unlimited pockets to try to stop someone who they view as a threat and now all of the corporate lobbying class has come out against nina turner now for the scoop on this we go to the daily poster where andrew perez and joel warner explain as progressive icon nina turner racks up local endorsements and surges in the polls in a closely watched congressional race washington lobbyists and business friendly democrats are working to try to block her victory in the august 3rd democratic primary for ohio's 11th congressional district Last week, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton endorsed Turner's opponent, Chantel Brown, in what observers saw as a response to Turner's association with Bernie Sanders. On that same day, lobbyists and the corporate-aligned Democratic House Coalition hosted a fundraiser to boost Brown after a poll sponsored by Turner's campaign found her with a commanding 50-15 to 15 lead in the race. Punchbowl posted an invite last week for the fundraising reception honoring Brown. Representative Pete Aguilar of California, a caucus vice chair of the corporate New Democratic Coalition, in the House was listed as a special guest at the event. The coalition's PAC, New Dem Action Fund, was listed as a host. The fundraising invite says, The host committee in formation for the event was Protecting Our Vote Federal PAC, a voter rights-oriented political action committee. The organization has an affiliated super PAC called Protecting Our Vote PAC that has made small independent expenditures supporting Brown. The super PAC's treasurer is Marcus Mason, a corporate lobbyist who is also listed as a host of the event. Mason's client include Fox News parent company Fox Corp, private equity giant Carlisle Group, student loan servicer Navient, the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools, tech giant Google, and gig delivery company DoorDash. Every other host named on the fundraising event appears to be a lobbyist too. Virgil Miller, lobbies for oil and gas giant ExxonMobil, telecom firms Comcast and AT&T pharmacy chain CVS Health, and DoorDash. Nicole Venable, lobbies for Apple, Bayer, McDonald's, and Navient. She also represents the Business Roundtable a lobbying group for corporate CEOs, and surveillance software company Palantir. Jerome Murray lobbies for the American Investment Council, a trade group for the private equity industry. He also represents the powerful drug lobby, pharmaceutical research, and manufacturers of America, as well as drug makers Pfizer, Amgen, and AbbVie individually. Brandon Garrett lobbies for Walmart, American Airlines, FedEx, Nike, and the Managed Funds Association, a trade group for hedge funds. Dante Smalls is a lobbyist for UPS. So basically, lobbyists who represent a plethora of sectors in corporate America are all coming out against Nina Turner. These anti-endorsements tell you everything you need to know about Nina Turner and say a lot about her opponent, who was previously begging for super PAC donations. And so if you want Nina Turner to win, you can't just bank on that one poll that shows her ahead. You have to fight. Because if corporate America can, they will sink Nina Turner's campaign. And yes, it's Nina Turner. She is a warrior. She's a political behemoth. Having said that, though, this isn't going to be an easy race, and it never was. So a poll might be a little bit deceptive in a way because it shows her in the lead, but then people might get complacent, and that complacency leads to defeat, and I don't want that to be the case. Look, I feel confident, I feel optimistic, but I don't want to take any chances. I think that we need to pretend as if it's the case that Nina Turner is actually 35 points down, not 35 points up. We have to have this mentality that it's not over until it's over, until it's called. And so if you truly want Nina Turner to win, which every single person on the left should 
then now is the time to get involved because the claws are out and they're coming after Nina Turner because they do not want her in the House of Representatives. So that really tells you that if she is elected, what kind of a politician she'll be if every uh, lobbyist from all these industries is coming out so forcefully to try to stop her. It says a lot.